the, the other thing that stuck out to me in this interview was this moment where he talks about NIL at, in, a, in a broad sense. And I just want, want to touch on it uh, briefly because I, I liked what he said here. So here's, here is that moment on Boston's Boys. Do you think it gives these kids an opportunity to kind of see, okay, there are other avenues I can take other than football to make relationships and, and get jobs and kind of shrink in that anxiety that you kind of get when you have to transition? I think one of the great things about NIL is that it has forced kids to understand that they have a brand and image and the choices that they make transitioning into college football, you know, have a huge impact on their future and potential uh, earning power. Mm -hmm. um, the issues that maybe I've had to deal with previously as a head coach, man, very few of, of those things are showing up right now because they are so uh, understanding and, and uh, have a global view of what they're trying to accomplish. It changes the mindset. It yeah. changes the opportunities. I think it's an amazing point that doesn't get brought up enough with NIL. I think there's a lot of people who think that the NIL's rules are going to change football, and it certainly is going to change college football. It already has. Um, but they're going to change it for the worse. And I think what he brings up here, first of all, shows that clearly he's a huge proponent of NIL. And in this new age, that's massive and amazing. And I think it's it's a very good sign for Tennessee that he's 100% behind it in the way that he is. But the point that he brings up here, I think, is excellent in that co college football, if you don't know how these players live, it's extremely insular. College football players do not live like a, a regular college student. They do not get an education like a regular college student. Frankly, they, they work with tutors. And, and Tennessee has an entire devoted department, essentially, uh, that works with athletes to get them the education. Um, and he says that the, the NIL really forces onto these kids things like being essentially being like fiscally responsible. Knowing what your worth is, he says it there, knowing what your brand is and and your market value kind of and what comes along with that. Like you, ESPN made a whole documentary. It's a, a great, uh, great movie called uh, Broke about how so many pro athletes don't know how to manage money. And so they they get millions of dollars and then it disappears in an instant. And this this type of thing brings an education before you ever get sent out fully into that real world, you go like, oh, well, I made $50,000 in college. I know what taxes are. I know what that means. I know what my worth is, what my brand is, what I can build on. And and to hear that from Tennessee's coaches is, is amazing and encouraging. But I also think just in a general sense with that NIL conversation, it's a great point. And it is it is a huge pro that I don't think that I had totally thought about with the new NIL rules. I hadn't really thought about it either. And it's a definitely a great point. The thing that I thought when I first heard the comments, aside from it's a great point, is what a different attitude Hypel has towards NIL than other coaches. Yeah. Because you've heard Lane Kiffin complaining about NIL stuff. We've certainly heard Debo Sweeney at Clemson very loud, uh, complaining very against the NIL stuff. Well, he claims he's for it in a sense, but he you can tell he doesn't like it at all. Even Nick Saban at Alabama, who his players are profiting from NIL, he's kind of talking out both sides of his mouth a little bit, where he's kind of downing NIL a little bit, but also bragging about how much his players are making. I mean, I think last week, I don't know if you heard or not, he made a comment about the collectives that are that are starting up. You know, Tennessee has a couple of the, that have started other programs. That they're really popping up all over the place now. And Saban made a comment that. Well, Alabama doesn't have, we haven't had to use collectives for our players to earn a lot of money. And they've earned as much as anybody in the country. He might have even said they've earned more than any anybody in the country. So he's kind of bragging about their players earning money, but doing it in different ways, whatever. But Hypo, he hasn't really engaged in any of that. I mean, he kind of rolls with the punches like, hey, this is what it is. I'm not really going to talk great about it, bad about it. It just is what it is. And he brings up this great point where it's like, okay, you're, you're looking for the positives out of this. Like that's, that's nice to hear because you don't hear that from college football coaches a lot. And it's very annoying to hear coaches like Dabo and Kiffin rail against NIL. When, like you said, it's here, it's not going anywhere. This is the new way of college football. 
sitting there being negative about it and, and preaching against it is not going to change anything. It just makes you look worse probably on the recruiting trail. It's nice to hear Hypo not take that approach. It's a great point. So much of the conversation around NIL has been the negatives. Yeah, we all get it. It's not ideal. And frankly, like to me, in an ideal world, college football is just the semi-pro league that it is. It's the feeder league to the NFL. It's a development league. And I think at the end of the day, we really all understand that. And we have different levels of acceptance in terms of, you know, what college football really is. And that's an ideal world. But so many people just want it to go back to this. It's all about, oh, you get a scholarship and an education and you leave with a degree and that's worth, that should be, and you want to play for the name on your jersey. And it just is, the toothpaste out of tube. Don't... We're, we're beyond that. And to hear the coach that represents the University of Tennessee have that attitude where he just goes, toothpaste out of tube. Not, I'm not going to go out and be Jimbo Fisher bitching and moaning about how whatever, literally all Jimbo does. I don't know if the guy coaches because he. I, I feel like the, everything he does is just complain. That's all I ever see from him. Uh, and and to have Hypel not do that. I'm sure he has these thoughts behind closed doors to whatever extent don't we all, but to just eschew all that and just go, I'm not going to touch any of that. Let's talk about the positives. Let's talk about what this brings to these players and how it makes their lives better and how it sort of writes a historical wrong in college sports. Um, and, and then we're going to use it to our advantage to go out and get a kid like Nico Iamaliava and he's going to come in and change his program. That's, I, that's all I, all I've ever wanted as far as this, I guess I didn't until the last couple of years. I don't, I didn't know that this was what I wanted maybe because I didn't know that this is how it would turn out. But this, this is exactly what I want to see. I, I didn't intend for this to become a showering down praise on hypo session, but it is when I see something good, I, I want to talk about it and bring it up and acknowledge it. And I think this is great. Yeah. And, Look, I think we're we're all, especially us, where we've we've covered, you know, so many different Tennessee coaches. You're always looking for a red flag or something that. Hypo, it's just it's just not really showing itself. Maybe it will. I don't know, but I think something else this right here shows is just him as a problem solver, which is a character trait that a college football coach needs to have. Uh, you you've got to recognize the problem and figure out how to deal with it. You can't dwell on why the problem's there, how it got there. I, I wish it wasn't there. It's there. Let's deal with it, make the best of it, and that's what he's doing. So I think that I mean that's kind of how he works on the football field too. I mean that that that's the way he runs his offense. Uh, that's just a good trait to have as a coach. I noted. It, the whole the clip as a whole didn't mean much, but I noted a quote that he said in this interview. He was talking about just Tennessee and coming to Tennessee, and he said that he was bringing a new age approach to an iconic brand. That's how he said it, a new age approach to an iconic brand. And I think that's his that shows his entire mentality. Right there. He also said in that interview, he said, we want to be the most aggressive team in college football. On and he, and he also, he emphasized in that, he said, I want it to be not just on offense, but it's the way that we coach on defense also to be the most aggressive team in college football. He wants to be this cutting edge, no holds barred. I mean, we, we saw it last year, the roller coaster ride that is the way that this guy coaches. And I have my qualms with it. I don't think it's perfect. I, I, think in a game like the Purdue game it may have hurt you but in the game in the game like Kentucky it's what won you the game so it's it's a two-way street and when it works it works and when it doesn't it can hurt you too but I I just love this mentality if for nothing else other than it is just cutting edge like it just is a fresh refreshing thing and, and at the perfect time where Tennessee had just gotten so bogged down in, you know, it, F Fulmer as AD really brought this, like, I want to harken back to my time 
in the 90s and bring in a guy who reminds me of myself in Pruitt. And Tennessee just needed to just throw all of that off its back. And this dude, obviously this thing could turn out to not be great. Let's all acknowledge. We we haven't seen the, the results on the football field yet. But I will say it certainly feels like He is coming into Tennessee in the right place at the right time. And I am incredibly encouraged by by what I hear in this dude's general philosophy and and the way that he he carries himself. That's all I know. It's just the style that you have to have to win championships, right? I mean, Jeremy Pruitt was a very mundane, uh, risk-adverse coach uh his, his offense was boring run run pass punt and he Pruitt fancied himself after Nick Saban but they weren't really you know he wanted the Nick Saban attitude and culture but he didn't coach like Nick Saban I mean Nick Saban takes risk yep uh he, he'll change his offense if he sees something's not working we, we've talked about it before he's already started doing that a little bit after watching Hypo they've started going with some tempo but he'll take risk with his coaching hires. He'll take risk with the way that he coaches. He's aggressive. He's not ultra conservative. It's a very Bill Belichick in the NFL is the same way. I mean, the New, New England Patriots, it's fourth and five on the 50. They get a first down, the game's over, or they punt it and they give you a chance. They're going to go for it. They're going to they're gonna get the first down. They're going to end the game right there. They're not going to give you a chance. They're not going to put the ball in your hands. Pruitt, Butch Jones, Derek Dooley. I mean, it's really been since Lane Kiffin was in Knoxville that Tennessee's had a a coach that kind of has this aggressive mentality. And that's really look, it's gonna bite you. It's it's going, especially if you don't have the elite talent, until Tennessee has Alabama and Georgia level talent, there's gonna be games like that Purdue game where this it bites you and you lose maybe because of this approach. But I feel like you're gonna win more games than you lose uh, coaching this way. Absolutely. I, I agree. Obviously, we'll have to see. <laughs> we'll have to, time will tell exactly where this goes. But I think Tennessee is in a great position with with a coach that has the right mentality. And let's just go from here. I that's that's really the point of this conversation. I liked what I heard here. It was there were some moments with Heupel that were a little more real than we've seen him be, and and I just appreciate it. I want to see more of that, but I also mm-hmm. don't blame him with kind of being guarded because it's just, that's the way college football coaches are a lot of the time. It, 